Hello and welcome to News Break. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up, Mount Pleasant Girls Soccer continues to dominate the first today's top stories. Donations in memory of beloved teacher Carla Lance have funded new book bins at Lincoln Elementary in Mount Pleasant. Lance passed away in 2018, but her impact on the school and community was significant. Traditional library organizational systems line books up with spines facing out, but the new bins will make books more accessible for younger readers still learning to read. Before, the younger kids found it hard to flip through books with spines out on shelves and then didn't know where to put them back. Lance spent 40 years at Lincoln Elementary School as a teacher, where she had a passion for her students and reading. Following her retirement in 2013, she continued to serve the school and community as a substitute teacher and a volunteer. The donations to the school library were made on behalf of Lance and beautifully represent her. Her family continues to love and support the school, and her impact is still felt by those who knew her. April Cutterback has been named the new event director for Washington Chamber of Commerce. Cutterback will be managing events for the chamber while working remotely from her position as manager of School Nutrition Association of Iowa. She said make working from home gave her the flexibility needed to juggle it all. Cutterback has extensive experience in marketing and event management, which Chamber Director Michelle Redlinger believes will allow her to handle the position effectively. Some events will be handled by other staff members, including legislative forums, the annual dinner, and Thursday Night Live series. However, Cutterback will take on about 75% of the events, with her first being the Spring Craft Fair followed by Ridiculous Days. Cutterback is excited about the role and plans to stay in touch with the community she calls home. Mount Pleasant High School rep will present the play Clue by Sandy Rustin, Hunter Foster, and Eric Kreiss with original music by Michael Holland on April 14th, 15th, and 16th at the Heatalator Performing Arts Center. The play, directed by teacher Marlene DePriest, features a 15-person cast and incorporates original music and sound effects to enhance the atmosphere of the story. DePriest expressed gratitude to volunteers who contributed to the success of the play, including Don and Kevin Wiley, who created a rotating set, and Gail Olson, who helped with costuming. Despite the series subject matter of murder, they pl the play also includes moments of physical comedy and is family-friendly for all ages. Dupree's called the play unique and challenging due to the many rooms and doors involved in the production. This will be Dupree's final play directed for the district. The Washington Lions Club celebrated its 50th anniversary on Tuesday with a meal and ribbon cutting ceremony at the Washington YMCA. The club focuses on providing people with disabilities, particularly those with vision impairment and hearing loss, the service they need. The club has expanded its mission to focus on diabetes and other health issues and has merged with the Women Only Lioness Club. Lions Club District Governor Mike Renkin praised the group for their community service and said that their service to the community was one of the best kept secrets there is. One of the programs initiated by the Washington Lions Club back in 2001, the Iowa Kids Site, was added by the program director, Lori Short, for its success in highlighting anomalies in children's eyes, allowing providers to recommend examination and treatment options before many kids know or can communicate their own vision impairments. Highland school officials in Riverside kept children indoors on Tuesday after a student told administrators about a potential threat to the secondary building. However, the student later retracted their warning, and after involving law enforcement to check the threat, they were assured that there was no basis for concern. The supposed shooter was not a threat and was outside the county at the time. Superintendent Ken Crawford said the situation was resolved within roughly 90 minutes of the initial alarm. The school will continue its activities as usual this week. Crawford added that the school officials handled the situation quickly and efficiently, as they always do. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the weather and sports. Since 1905, Kelowna Cooperative Technology Company has helped our community stay connected with the latest advancements in clear, dependable telecommunication services. KCTC provides rural Iowans with access to high-speed fiber internet, as well as phone, television, computer repair, and cybersecurity solutions. We're also proud supporters of local organizations and area schools within the community. KCTC, keeping Kelowna connected. At the Capper Auto Group, we put our customers' needs first and understand that everyone is as different as the vehicle they select. We offer new Ford, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram vehicles in a friendly environment that puts you in the driver's seat. When it comes to service, we maintain factory-trained technicians and competitive pricing. 
The Capper Auto Group still believes that service after the sale provides the best customer experience. Come see the Capper experience for yourself. Hospice isn't a place, it's a type of care that focuses on living. Servicing a seven-county area, the Hospice of Washington County staff of nurses, social work, hospice aides, spiritual and grief support, volunteers, music and massage therapists are able to provide free end-of-life care where the patient lives. We write wills, give consent for organ donation, but rarely is there a plan for what we would want the final phase of our lives. At Hospice of Washington County, we encourage our patients to be in charge of their health care decisions while maintaining quality of life. Tammy takes the time and has the personal interest in each one of us. I don't worry about what's going to happen because I know my policy is taken care of. She pulls what I need and puts it together, which is the program I get from her. Every year she calls around September or so and says, there's changes again, and I'm gonna do the best thing for you. It's been perfect. She does a great job. Welcome back to News Break. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. We have your five-day forecast coming up, first obituaries. Blair Lowell Bird, a Bonaparte passed away on April 7th at the age of 69. Schmidt's Funeral Home of Farmington is in charge of the arrangements. Rose Mary Becker of Farmington passed away on April 5th at the age of 73. Schmidt's Funeral Home of Farmington is in charge of the arrangements. Joni Lee Junkins of Montrose passed away on April 10th. Schmidt's Funeral Home of Donaldson is in charge of the arrangements. Marjorie May Helt of Mount Pleasant passed away on April 10th at the age of 69. A funeral service will be held at 11 a.m. April 14th at Elliott Chapel. Virginia Ardith Boyd of Mount Pleasant passed away on April 10th at the age of 92. Funeral services will be held at 11 a.m. April 14th at the Olson Powell Memorial Chapel. Dale S. Richards of Washington passed away on April 10th at the age of 94. A celebration of life will be held at 11 a.m. April 14th at the Jones and Dean Funeral Home. Sally S. Wenger of Washington passed away on April 7th at the age of 77. Private family services will be held at a later date. Jones and Dean Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. That was obituaries. It is now time for your five-day forecast. Today is the warmest day of the week with a high of 83 degrees. It is windy with low humidity, so a red flag warning is in place. Tomorrow it will be 82 and sunny with a, with a little less wind. On Friday, temperatures will continue to fall slightly down to 81 and it will be partly cloudy. Temperatures will plummet this weekend with the high Saturday being 62, and there's a 70% chance of thunderstorms. Finally, on Sunday, it will be 58 and partly cloudy with strong winds. We're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at sports. Federation Bank is a locally owned bank providing award-winning customer service. We believe that we are more than just a federation of banks, but a federation of communities serving Brighton, Richland, Wellman, and Washington, Iowa. Federation Bank's highly skilled staff is here to make sure you are able to accomplish your personal and professional goals, whatever they may be. Federation Bank, your family bank. Family owned and operated by Andy and Sarah Ross, Ross Auto has been your vehicle repair and maintenance headquarters since 1935. We specialize in all makes of cars and light duty trucks. With our variety of available services, let us help you keep rolling and your vehicle operating efficiently. Services include general auto repair, alignments, brakes, fuel injection, and more. Schedule your appointment today at 319-653-5656. That's 319-653-5656. Welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. It is now time for sports. Sports. Brought to you by Fairway. The Mount Pleasant girls track and field team scored a win in Fort Madison on Tuesday as the Panthers scored 159 points to take first in the 2023 Tim Lamb Relays. The Panthers outdueled Washington by 19 points in a Class A race that saw four teams hit the 100 mark in team points. 
Mount Pleasant won six events on the day to earn the victory. Three of those came in the relays as the Panthers racked up points in the 4x100, the 4x200, and the 4x800. The Panthers 4x100 team of Courtney Robb, Bailey Jalis, Tristan Scholl, and Andy Scott took first. The 4x2 squad of Alex Scott, Jalis, Scholl, and Courtney Robb won. And the 4x8 quartet of Alex Scott, Scholl, Scott, and Robb also won. Mount Pleasant's L.C. Lang scored a solo win in the 400-meter dash while Vienna Van Duren scooped up a win in the 400-meter hurdles. The Panthers won one throwing event. Ella Ensminger took first in the shot put, throwing 34 feet and 4.75 inches. Washington had three wins on the day, including two individu individually. Iris Dahl won the 800-meter run, and Grace Voss cleared five feet in the high jump to take first in that. The 4x4 relay team of Voss, Eden, Eden Levetsov, Lauren Horak, and Dahl took first for the Demons. The Mount Pleasant boys soccer team came up just short to Keokuk in a Southeast Conference matchup on Monday night. After a slow first half, both teams picked up the pace in the second, but in the end, it was Keokuk coming out with the goal advantage 3-2. to two. White, along with, two, had, along with his two goals, had 15 shots on goal. Maroni Sanchez finished with three shots on goal. Rudy Ruiz Mata finished with 12 saves on the day in goal. Mount Pleasant moves to 1-2 and two on the season and will play host to Burlington on Thursday. The Mount Pleasant girls soccer put together a spectacular performance on the pitch Monday night against Keokuk. The Panthers bombarded the Chiefs offensively and coupled that with some stingy defense in a 7-1 victory. Along with their scoring, Awerda and Parrott both had one assist. Aurora Hummel and Toy Wilson had Aurora Hummel tallied an assist as well. Manning finished with a pair of assists. Mount Pleasant improves to 3-1 on the season and will take on Burlington, who is 2-2 on the year, on Thursday away from home. Fairfield Girls Tennis picked up its second Southeast Conference victory on Monday night with a win over Panthers of Mount Pleasant 7-2. The Panthers put up a fight, but the Trojans won four of the five single matches and two of the three doubles bouts. Mount Pleasant's one single victory came from Aubrey Richmond. Richmond defeated Lola Hatchett 8-1 in the number six match. The Panthers' second victory of the day came in the number three doubles match as Drury and Richmond defeated Carter and Hatchett 8-5. Another day, another win for the Washington girls golf team as the Demons picked up their third straight Southeast Conference victory on Monday in Fort Madison. The Demons shot 172 on the day, beating Keokuk by 23 strokes. Fairfield took third at 200 and Mount Pleasant was fifth at 223. Washington's win came on the back of McKenna Conrad's 39. She tied Burlington's Lauren Briggs for the best score of the day. Kaylin Long wasn't far behind, her teammate turning in a 41. Adeline Long shot a 45 on the day, Elisa Goff finished at 47, Macy Williams finished at 49, and Mallory Johnson shot a 51. Mount Pleasant posted their first team score of conference play. Kylie Walderback, 48, helped the Panthers do just that. Ashlyn Bocamp shot 56 for the Panthers, Elena Hulkamp finished at 61, and Felicity Metcalf ended the day at 68. That's the news for Southeast Iowa. I've been your host, Nick Steffens. This has been your news break, and I will